Hello everyone, it's me, PMC Starvox, here in SPT 3.8.3. Today we'll be discussing my experience with the update and going over my new mod list. I am, however, a little sad. It was recently announced in the SPT Pub Discord server that the project will be dropping Aki, meaning autumn in Japanese, from its name, as it is now a distant and irrelevant concept from years ago. I didn't get why it was in the name to begin with, but thought it was pretty cool and even made a graphic for it, so that'll need an update as well. Overall, I had a very smooth experience getting into SPT383 and was able to update without any problems. The very day that I got everything installed, Battlestate Games released a patch for Tarkov which prevented anyone who got it from being able to run SPT for a few days, and I got lots of questions about that at the time. But it's all been solved now, and you shouldn't have any trouble updating everything if you aren't already on 383. I managed to get all my favorite mods from previous versions installed and running, and I'm already seeing improvements worth mentioning. There's a link to my new mod list in the video description, I've made it in Notion and can easily update it when I make changes. I won't use every mod, but plan to demonstrate the more popular ones as I have been, and won't be opposed to adding or swapping items in the list within reason, mostly for the sake of performance. SPT 3.8.3 now includes all client changes from EFT version 14.1.3.29351 to version 14.8.0.29997 and to have the release notes linked in my new mod page. If it seems like several versions or updates came out in quick succession, it's because Live Tarkov was being patched frequently after their recent newsworthy actions with the game. SPT developers had to find ways to keep up and make the mods compatible in a very short time, so hotfixes were released. Version 3.8.3 was pushed to fix a bundle loading issue with 3.8.2 and is still compatible with mods for 381. What's more, there's already word in the pub about progress on SPT 3.9 and how we may see it soon. So let's go over my mod list from start to finish and see what I've kept, added, and omitted this time around. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more SPT content and join our Discord servers to stay informed. Also find the Club Starvox Patreon account where there's a poll to determine the order of mods reviewed. We thank you for your interest. This new list is comprised of my favorite mods and those that have been most useful for me for this channel, while still being somewhat limited for the sake of performance. I've omitted questing bots, that's lit, and several custom traders to reduce bloat as I get started in this version. I'll also be editing swag and donuts config files to limit bot spawns on all maps. You can follow along using the link to this list in the video description. Let me know if there's any other useful information that I should add to it as time goes on. I'll begin with the big three in my other overhaul mods. The SPT Realism mod is the famous and near total overhaul of Tarkov mechanics for more hardcore and realistic raids. This does so much, from changing trader inventories in the flea market to overhauling the injury and recovery systems and even including selectable stances with immersive impacts on stamina. Be sure to find the config tool in its mod folder to access those settings not available in-game, there are many. The Realism Compatibility Patch is a mod that currently makes the raid overhaul and painter mods compatible with Realism mods overhauled systems. Sane is the the famous bot behavior overhaul mod, replete with features and a GUI for live changes in RAID. Open the same tool with F6 and select from the difficulty presets already included or make your own. I've done a couple of videos on this mod already if you'd like to get an idea of how to use it. The overhaul is so great that many users are routinely impressed by the AI and refuse to play Tarkov without it. I'll include the looting bots mod here, as I would with questing bots if I were using it. It enables all bots to loot items, containers, and corpses on their patrols and is fully configurable, hugely enhancing contextual bot behavior in Tarkov. It's very immersive behavior and provides opportunities for action. Swag plus Donuts is one of the big three and provides configurable spawn wave scenarios to spawn bots according to player preference for each raid. Essential to the complete overhaul of Tarkov and packed with varied scenarios of all kinds, this is the mod for every player. If you don't want lots of new features and changed gameplay mechanics, but vanilla raids are still boring all on their own, just grab some Donuts and select any of the random scenarios. Bots will spawn according to the preset for as long as you're in a raid, preventing unpopulated maps and providing ways to complete certain quests. Big Brain is a mod that adds extra logic layers for bot brains and is required by larger mods like Sane to function properly, changing the AI behavior. The Waypoints mod expands the movement potential of bots on every map and is required by other large mods like Swag and Donuts. Raid overhaul drastically changes the way raids play out, adding dynamic events and effects, cleaning up corpses, and even using the player's local time in-game. This mod is another that is replete with features and all but requires a thorough examination of its description if you want to be anything other than completely surprised by the heart attack that'll incapacitate your PMC without warning. Fortunately, it can be fully configured with the F12 menu to enable or disable any of the events. SamSwat's helicopter crash sites adds Daisy-inspired wrecked helos to raids in SPT that contain large loot boxes. Configure the likelihood that a crash site will appear in your next raid using the F12 menu. Oh, and the Server Valley Modifier, which is an extensive standalone server mod with a rich interface and the power to change almost any value in the game. 
It's the secret big number 4 that runs in the background to suit our needs. Be sure to enable a field that you want to edit before trying to change anything, then save and apply the profile you're working on to have it run when you play SPT. Now for the mods that add clothing, gear, and various tactical equipment. The Impact Shop module provides a custom shop used by lots of other mods on the file base with custom content, some of which we'll cover in this list. The All the Clothes mod makes every item of clothing in the game available to purchase in Fence's new services tab, and even unlocks the scav and boss faces and voices for the player character. Use it to expand your wardrobe and roleplay as your favorite boss. Obviously, the Handsome Killer is your best option here. Virtual's Custom Quest Loader is a mod dependency enabling custom traders to have quests of their own and should be mentioned before I discuss the ones I'm using. Artem is a custom trader with new quests and unique tactical gear. You'll find some very tactical outfits in his inventory, modern tops and bottoms with recognizable patterns and patches. What's more, his quests are lore friendly and good for getting started in a new profile. Painter is a custom trader with several companion mods for a great array of cool new gear, skins, and equipment. Those companion mods come with special quests of their own as well. Black Core is one of those mods and adds dark stylish weapon part variants to his inventory. There are others with different color schemes like the White Core and Sand Core mods, but I don't have those installed at the moment. Mag Tape adds magazines with different colors of tape to Painter's inventory to identify ammo types or for increased visibility. A very immersive and helpful inclusion. The Tactical Gear Component mod adds several pieces of modern tactical equipment, weapons, and clothing items to Painter's inventory. Another high quality injection of modern soldiering kit, this mod provides my my favorite top on the file base, as well as two extremely useful containers to fill my tea bag. Be sure to try the tactical belts and back panel packs for vests, all provided through Painter. Epic's All in One contains the full library of Epic Range Times custom weapons and attachments, an expansive tactical collection. This is another go to for adding lots of well made custom furniture with well over a few dozen new pieces to build with. Rexana's Vector Strike Face adds a cool looking mount for the titular Chris SMG, spiky and stylish with a sticker of a nice lady on the side. This is best used with Realism Mod's weapon melee attack for maximum payoff. I only use a couple of mods to influence the graphics in SPT, and they do a wonderful job. Amanza's graphics provides a customizable overhaul for in-game lighting and post-processing. The mod is fully configurable in the F12 menu. Use it to enable things like motion blur or to change the way that lights behave. Even without the fun effects, it does wonders to make Tarkov more visible with controls that go as deep as you're willing to go. The deeper settings will be overkill for most users, but don't be afraid to play with lighting and color management to find something that works best for you. Meow Shader is a reshade interface for SPT with with loads of plugins to change the game's graphics. It appears to be out of date on the file base, but it's just reshade and hasn't needed an update all this time. It runs just fine. I like to use the plugins that make the game more clear and visible while making full use of the very rich colors that often hide in the maps. It can make the user interface much, much clearer and easier for me to see, bringing all the details out and defeating lots of blur that I never knew was there. Let's move on to the mods that change the UI and handle quality of life in the game. First off, the EFT API mod. Sounds intimidating, but it's just a dependency to enable mods like the game panel HUD and environment replace. It does come with an in-game configuration manager to control the mods that fall under its umbrella map to the home key. Dynamic Maps replaces the in-game map screen with an animated and dynamic viewer complete with markers and information. This mod is a dream come true, just as useful as it sounds and works very well. A great asset to players new and old. Be sure to check my recent video on this mod. The Expanded Door Interactions mod adds more ways to handle doors and raids, like opening them quietly or just enough to peek through a gap. Another group of features I would assume Tarkov to have on its own, I hugely appreciate these additional door options, finally making more use of the context menu. The Item Info mod adds more information to the inspection screen and adds rarity colors to item icon boxes. The Trader Scrolling mod can move the trader list when it's too large for its original screen space, making them all accessible. Scroll or drag with the mouse to move the list from side to side and access your numerous AI art waifu replacements for the trader portraits. I know which ones you have installed. Trader modding and improved weapon building is an invaluable overhaul to weapon building in Tarkov. Get access to trader inventories from the customization screen and buy all the new parts you select at once, hugely reducing the time it takes to shop around and compare. Always be sure to purchase all parts and then hit the save icon to assemble your weapon, then back out of the customization screen to find it in your stash. I cannot play without this mod. Modding Stats Helper is a companion mod for trader modding and provides tooltips with stats on the parts in the builder. Very useful for making quick decisions between parts in the build screen. The Player Encumbrance Bar mod is a nifty animated progress bar to monitor the burden on the player. This isn't necessary for immersion or anything, but I really enjoy an animated meter for my character in the field. A quick way to make weighty decisions on the fly. Skipper is a mod that provides an option to skip any part of a quest for brevity or convenience. Perfect for restoring progress after a total update or a catastrophic loss of profile data, or even setting up a particular playthrough with specific conditions. The UI Fixes mod provides quality of life adjustments to the interface, like swapping the place of two items or hiding undeveloped context menu 
menu actions. The simple crosshair mod adds a dynamic and configurable fading crosshair to the game with a convenient toggle switch. This seems to be the best iteration of a crosshair in Tarkov yet, highly functional and appropriately minimal. Very helpful when testing weapon performance with mods that change camera position. Some mods enhance player PMC and equipment performance in ways that I just can't play without. Backdoor Bandit enables proper door breaching with shotguns and explosives, including unique ammunition and C4 charges to get through the heaviest locks without a key. Tarkov being such a realistic game with a complete complement of realistic munitions, door breaching is a painful omission for the vanilla game. It's very immersive, especially in the midst of a firefight or after hours of searching for just the right munition to break into a locked room. Fontaine's FOV fix and variable optics is an overhaul for the player weapon FOV with a fully configurable ADS and camera zoom. This is what I use to adjust the ADS and zoom the camera like I do. The zoom settings in particular are at the bottom of the mod's Bepinex entry. The zoom slider is set to remain the same by default, so adjust it down or up to increase or decrease magnification when you press the hotkey. Fontaine's red dot tweaker adds controls for the appearance of red dot sight optics, like changing the size or color for visibility. I love this mod and think that it's a fine concession for being unable to use the controls on Tarkov's electronic optic attachments. We should have such control over the dot displays and I really appreciate the good fortune. Samswat's increased FOV mod extends the player FOV slider from 1 to 150 and can even adjust the position of the first person camera. I actually use this to bring the FOV down to 70 for regular play and give myself a wider HUD FOV using the Bepinex menu to see more of my weapon and the Sunto core on my wrist. The modular attachments server slide shooter system adds mounts that move weapon attachments along their rails for custom positioning. Another feature I would have liked in the base game, this is particularly useful for moving optics into better positions. Not all attachments will be compatible, but I find that most are. First set the base for the part type you want to adjust, then set the position part depending on how far forward or backward it should be, and put your attachment onto that. Dead Gamer Mode adds quick controls for invincibility, automatic healing, magazine loading speed, and more. The Stackable Grenades mod can be configured to arrange grenade ammunition into stacks of any number for greater storage and transfer control. Very useful for deliberately carrying lots of ordnance, but can easily lead to over-encumbrance in the field. Two slot extended mags reduces the space required for tall magazines by one to fit into any standard rig pouch. You likely see me use this mod in many videos, it's how I stuff those long mags into pockets and whatnot. And finally, some miscellaneous mods that change bits of the SPT user experience in ways that I like. The load order editor is a simple drag and drop mod organizer to arrange required sequential loading. Most mods that need specific placement in the load order will say so in the description, and that's because they or other mods will break if placed poorly. This iteration of the mod is, I think, the quickest and lightest one yet, and is very easy to use. Custom launcher backgrounds can customize the SPT launcher wallpaper with any user image. Since the launcher is a small and horizontal window, you'll want any custom backgrounds to be in landscape orientation to avoid skewing and stretching. The environment replace mod can set your own images and videos on the game's splash screen and menus. Use screenshots and clips from your own games or download your favorites from the file base gallery. This really is another level of customization for SPT as it has never seemed possible that it would become a feature of live EFT. Go crazy and post your backgrounds on our Discord server. Keep in mind that this list will certainly change over time, as new mods are added, older ones are updated, and some current ones lose their support. My mod list page updates live whenever I edit it, so check whenever you'd like to see what I've got running. I probably won't include temporary testing mods or combinations of them for specific videos, so I'll be sure to point it out when that happens. Now that this project is out of the way for SPT383, I'm going to start making videos for individual mods and finally launching my Zero to Hero series, which has been eagerly awaited by many of you, and I appreciate your patient interest. Our Patreon supporters can vote on which mods should be reviewed first and what those reviews should contain. Find a link in the description to the Club Starvox Patreon account and pledge your support today. Also be sure to join the Club Starvox Discord server for more about SPT and all the things that I do. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful or informative for you. Let me know if you'd like me to make a video like this for each new version of SPT that I use on the channel. It was certainly helpful for me to conduct a thorough study of all my mods to fully familiarize myself with everything that goes on in the game. If you're all in on SPT, like and subscribe for more content. Leave a comment about your experiences with version 3A3 and I'll be back soon with more videos. Good luck out there.